an American hero's final interview. That's how he described it to us on the phone. As I reported, Lou Alvarez is a retired NYPD detective who rushed to ground zero when the Twin Towers fell on 9-11. For weeks following the terror attack, as authorities assured the world the air is safe, he breathed in what we now know was toxic dust while he dug through the piles of debris searching for victims. Yesterday, nearly 18 years later, after 68 rounds of chemotherapy, doctors told him there's nothing else they can do to fight his stage four cancer. Last week, Lou went with comedian and activist John Stewart and other 9-11 first responders to Capitol Hill to urge again lawmakers to provide long-term funding for the 9-11 Victim Compensation Fund. We went to ground zero the Pentagon and Shanksville to help people first and then help their families bury someone or something. You made me come down here the day before my 69th round of chemo. And I'm going to make sure that you never forget to take care of the 9-11 Responders. He never finished that 69th round of chemo. Yesterday, Lou posted on Facebook that during his treatment, nurses noticed he was disoriented and discovered that his liver was shutting down. All treatment stopped. Lou Alvarez is now in hospice care. He reached out to our team and said he wants to do this one last interview to advocate for his fellow 9 11 responders. Lou wrote on his Facebook post, I will continue to fight until the good Lord decides it's time. Please take care of yourselves and each other. Still here, still breathing, still fighting. With us now from hospice on Long Island, one of New York's finest, first responder on 9-11, retired NYPD detective and American hero, Lou Alvarez, and with him, his son, David. Lou, thank you so much. It's such an honor for you to be here with us. Are, are your caregivers making you comfortable? Yes, hi, Shep. It's good to be here. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm doing well. I'm comfortable. I'm not in a lot of pain. I have my family surrounded me, and uh, I'm at peace. W would you like to share with our viewers anything about your, your last conversations with your doctors? Well, uh, what happened was... Uh, when I went for my last round of chemo, uh, they noticed that I was disoriented. Uh, I didn't know the date. I didn't know what hospital I was in. Uh, I, I couldn't answer uh, simple questions of what year it was and stuff like that. So uh, the doctors sent me for tests, and they realized that uh, the liver had to finally uh, shut down, and my body was filling up with uh, ammonia, and that's what was making me uh, so disoriented. Uh, life's final curtain is hard for everyone, and I wonder, as you reflect mm -hmm. on, on your life, w what you would like our viewers to know about it, what you look back and say, that was important, or, or that really matters? Well, I have no regrets. No regrets whatsoever. 9-11 uh, happened. We got called down. It's my job as an NYPD detective to respond to emergencies. So no hesitation. What went down? Spent... Uh, about three months down there doing the bucket brigade, doing a rooftop uh, detail, trying to find remains. I did what every other FDNY, NYPD, EMS worker, everybody. I'm, no, I'm nobody special. I did what all the other guys did, and now we're paying the price for it. I'd argue that all of you are special. I'd argue that every person who serves his fellow man is special and deserving of honor, as you are today. Mm -hmm. But you called us saying that you wanted to make one last statement, and, and I wondered if you'd like to do that. 
Yes. We need this bill passed, Shep. It's got to be passed quickly and efficiently so we never have to come down to Washington again and lobby. It's, uh, it's not fair. I've been blessed. I got sick 16 years after the fact. This is my son, David. He was 11 years old on 9-11. He's 29 years old now. And uh, I'm leaving him without a father. I also have two other sons, Tyler and Ben, who are 19 and 14. No. And I'm leaving them without a father. And there's plenty like me. Like I said, I'm not special. There's plenty of guys like me, okay? I got sick 16 years after the fact. And there's workers out there who say, this isn't going to happen to me. I'm okay. The time has passed. The time doesn't, it's not going to pass. There's going to be more and more and more responders getting sick. And I just want them to know that just because you're not sick now doesn't mean you're not going to get sick. And you need to be covered. You know, I'm lucky to have the health care that, that I got, but there's guys out there that don't have it. There's plenty of people that, that in terms of going through the stress of fighting cancer, they're also fighting the, the financial stress of, of the health care. And it's not right. You know, we, we served our city, our state, our country, and should be compensated for it. Not compensated in, in the sense that, you know, uh, we want to be rich. We just want the money to be there for our families so that, God forbid, they do get sick, they're covered. They have their health insurance, they have the VCF fund, will take care of their families. Uh, God forbid they get sick and die. So that's what I'm advocating for, okay? We did our job. Congress has to do theirs, okay? Yeah. We were told the air was safe down there, and it wasn't. But you know what? That doesn't matter because we would have went in anyway because that's what we do. It's, a, it's, a, it's not a job for us, it's a calling, okay? So we would have went in anyway, and uh, this is what, what happened. You spent so, a lifetime protecting and serving, and suddenly you're now an advocate full-time. How was that transition, and what's this experience been like for you? Uh, it, it's been a little overwhelming. I'm, uh, I'm a humble, under-the-radar kind of guy. And to, to have all this uh, attention is a little strange. But I do, I'll do whatever I have to do to see my brothers and sisters who aren't covered get the, the coverage that they need and the help they need. And I, I want to tell all other first responders, if you think it can't happen to you, just take a look at me, okay? 16 years later, I got sick. So it's an epidemic. There's going to be more and more first responders getting sick. And the government has to take care of them. It's just a, a matter of decency, a matter of, of doing the right thing. We did the right thing when we went down there. Now it's the government's turn to do the right thing by us. Okay? Take, you know,
take care of the first responders that are sick. E ease their lives a little bit. You know, uh, going, going through uh, this cancer, it, it's stressful. Not just on me, on my whole family. It's been very stressful. And we, we need to ease the stress on the first responders. Lou? And let them know that, that they're, they're not alone. That the government is here to, to, to back them up, to give them the support they need, the, finan the financial support that they're going to need when they get sick. And it's just a matter of time. You know, most of us that were down there, it's just a matter of time before we get sick. Lou, as fate would have it, uh, and as situations have dictated, you will now be a historical figure, uh, especially uh, in this city. And I, and I wonder when people talk about mm. Lou Alvarez of New York's finest, what, what you'd like for them to say about you? I want them to say that I fought for first responders. And it's not just a New York thing. It didn't just happen in New York. As, as a bomb technician, I traveled around the country training and uh, with other departments. And I would talk to guy, guys that were like, hey, I got this cough and I don't feel good. And these are guys from Arizona, New Mexico, California. When 9-11 happened, they all showed up because that's what we do. Not just New York, all over the United States. They all showed up. So it's not, not, not a New York, New York thing. It's a country thing. There's, there's, there's guys in other states and other cities that are, city, uh, that, that are sick and they don't understand why. And I just want them to know, hey, if you were down at Ground Zero or the Fresh Guild Landfill or Shanksville, get yourself checked out. Yeah. Because you could be sick from Ground Zero. Lou, we're honored to know you. Uh, we're, we're, we're thankful that you're here and, and with us today. And and to your family, uh, all the best and all the love. And, and to you, uh, great honor and thanks for your service to our city and our nation. My pleasure, sir. Lou Alvarez, American hero. At this hour, as the 9-11 Victims Compensation Fund is running out of money, and as those like Lou suffer, lawmakers are still squabbling about what to do. The bill to extend the fund is in limbo on Capitol Hill. Lawmakers are unable to work out the details. Our senior producer for Capitol Hill, Chad Pergram, reports it's unlikely that lawmakers will do anything about it before they go on their July 4th break. Of course, they could. They could resolve their differences and pass this bill right away. Lou Alvarez and thousands of others would thank them. It's estimated the number of people who have and will develop 9-11-related illnesses will reach 95,000.